<laughs> oh my god, you would come on with like music bumping. I love that. I thought I'm turning up over here. After that, I... yeah. Wait, when you just finished a little bit ago, right? Ooh, I look like ooh. yeah, and I, I was surprised I was able to get through it because um, I woke up super sore. And you know, you teach classes too, so it's like when you wake up sore, you're like. I don't know why I put myself through this. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. And then you're like, oh shit, I have to do this again. Um, and you're doing it like what, Monday? Are you doing it every day of the week? Every day of the week. I think starting next week, I think I'm going to just do three days a week. I mean, right. like this, this week I'm doing four, but I just feel like five is a lot because I want to take other people's classes too. No, I totally feel that. Today, I'm having, like, the weirdest day. We're in the middle of, like, apartment hunting, so I feel like it's consuming all of my time. And I'm like, I don't even want to work out today, even though I feel like it'll make me feel better. But anyways, what's up? Okay, so I'm going to turn off the um, comments so okay. you don't have them all over your face. And then at the end, um, I'll turn them back on so people can ask you stuff. I look so pale in this light today. Woo! You look so pretty. Do I? I Listen, I did my... I put mascara on my eyelashes. These are quarantine eyelashes. They're mine. <laughs> so, I love that. I'm like so also I'm half eating my lunch. I love it. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, if you guys are in here and you don't know, this is Janelle. She's an instructor out in Southern California. I'm like, I always get the Californias mixed up. Um, but she teaches out in La Jolla and Del Mar, correct me? Del Mar. Okay, cool. So um, really briefly, Janelle was in group 26. I mean, she can tell you this, but she, um, she was in the group that Liv was in. And I just interviewed Liv last week. And it's just so funny. Janelle and I found each other on it, like social media on Instagram. And we were like, I'll never forget when Janelle messaged me. And she was like, I feel like you're my personality doppelganger. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember telling me that? Yeah, exactly. And I was like, and I was one so flattered because I love her and I just know she's like crazy and wild, but also still so sweet. Um, and I was like, I have to get to know this girl. And then, yeah, so we were only one group apart. So I feel like we're very like similar on like our journey kind of. And um, we met this year at Legend for the first time in person and we were roommates and it was amazing. So yeah. They roomed us. I felt like they knew. They were like, these two have the same vibe. We'll just room them up together and go for it. Was, it was, I remember somebody, maybe it was Marvin there. He was like, did you guys know each other before this? And we we're like, no. I mean, like we did, but like we hadn't met before. And I feel like people just thought that we had been friends for a long time. It was funny. Um, yes. But I love that. But anyways, I love Janelle. She's doing killer workouts. But today, today is all about just learning about Janelle and her soul journey and all that stuff. Um, so I'm so excited. I mean, some of it, I may, may maybe don't even know. So I'm pumped. So let's just hop right in. So okay. I kind of introduced. you. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, no, I mean, that's, that's like pretty eating. much it as far as like how we met and where I started my journey at SoulCycle, obviously in group 26. Um, mm -hmm. And that was in October of 2017. So since then, I've been with Soul. And just like you said, I feel like me reaching out to you I was I like I gravitated towards you instantly over social media which I thought was funny because I'm like I, I fucking love this girl I love her personality and her energy and I felt connected to you through social media without really like actually knowing you yet which is crazy isn't that wild it's so it's crazy wild. I love yeah. that though we're meant yeah. to be. anyway so let's just get on into it how did you find soul cycle I feel like I don't know I, I may know this I don't remember how did you find Soul? so um, Soul Cycle wasn't here in San Diego yet. Um, it was before the times of Soul in San Diego. And uh, I was doing competitions, NPC competitions. And with competitions, you have to do a lot of cardio. I mean, you have to do 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon, just depending on your regimen. And I hated cardio. I still hate cardio. Um, obviously, that's why I suffer through HIIT workouts once yesterday. <laughs> but um, right. So they put you on the Stairmaster or you're on the treadmill and you're on there twice a day for months until your show. And it just gets really repetitive and really boring and you start to kind of dread it. And one of my girlfriends, I was working at Flux at the time, I was, I was a bottle service girl popping bottles and shit. <laughs> and she was like, you know, why don't you come in cycling with me? Because she did competitions as well and was burnt out on just regular cardio. And I'm like, okay, I can, because at the time everybody was wearing those little uh, polar sensors. Oh Do you my God. Those? Yes. I used to wear those. Yeah. The band, the band and then the watch. And like, that was just how you, how you tracked your calories. Right? Yep. You're so right. So she's like, throw on that band and we just go to town and, and it's like dancing. I feel like I'm in a nightclub. And I was like, 
interesting. Cardio in a nightclub and you're dancing on a bike. I could be down for that. So when I first went, I felt like I was really strong and I get on a bike and I'm in the back row and I'm just like, I can't follow the beat. I'm like, what the hell is happening? What is the tap back push up? What's going on? And this was at a different um, cycling studio and the instructor was amazing, but I was just like, I, I couldn't, my body couldn't, and my body was strong, like really strong, but it was right. like, it couldn't figure out how to move on a bike, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's kind of what segue, you know, segued me into cycling. And I just like from the back row, I kept going. Cause I'm, I'm that type of person. That's like, if something's really, really hard for me, it either a totally makes me never want to do it again. Cause I'm just like, I, I didn't like it at all. Or I have a connection and it sparks me to want to master it. Mm -hmm. So from that point on, I was like, oh my God, because everybody's having so much fun. And it's the community, obviously, that sucks you yeah. in. And I was like, mm -hmm. I want to be in the front row one day. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just kind of slowly but surely, it probably took me like a month. And I remember my first jog from start to finish out of the saddle was to Beyonce's EXO. You love oh me like my EXO. God. And it's not even that fast, right? It's maybe right. like, what, an 80 BPM or something. And But it felt... I was so overwhelmed with like pride and I'm like, all right, all right. Okay. I'm, I'm ready for the front row. And then I was sidebar and then I'm looking at the instructor and I'm like, I want to do that. <laughs> so who were you? So this was at a different studio though, right? You taught at a different spin studio before yeah. soul cycle, right? Yeah. Okay. But you had taken yeah. soul. I had taken soul up in Newport. So I had to drive all the okay. way to Newport Got to it. get like that soul experience. But I hadn't, I actually didn't at that point ride at Soul yet. I had heard about Soul. I mean, any cycling studio knows who Soul Cycle is. They're, right. you know, yeah. they, they started cycling. So um, there's no doubt about that. But um, so I went through their, I got, I auditioned, went through their tra training program, became an instructor there. A right. year passes. And here comes the little rumors going around about Soul Cycle San Diego. And mm -hmm. I'm like, ding, 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 ding. Totally. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, and, so yeah, I, and yeah. okay. So you knew you didn't want to relocate from the start. From the start, right. yeah, that's amazing. You know. So it took you got in the first time, right? Yeah, with I got your yeah. bird, with your bird pants. Should you tell I everybody that you pants. have birds? Yeah, I should have worn my bird pants. <laughs> I mean, that's a fun fact about Janelle is that like everybody you know has their like dogs or cats, and Janelle has what four. Four, yeah. Four birds. Four. She's like the bird. When we were in training, they said that there was like a bird lady in the group before, and that was just, yeah, <laughs> which is so funny. They're like, yeah, that bird lady. So okay, <laughs> so you pretty much answered the first two questions. Do you remember um, in your bird pants at your auditions what songs you used? Do you remember? Yes, I used um, Chris Brown Pie, because uh, it was like a fun jog, and it just came out kind of like recent and yeah. I just got me lit because I was like, when I heard that's it, that's important. Like, oh, yeah, I don't know, just the beat. And then uh, my seated flat, we did a seated flat with runs. It's funny because they're like, you know, they tell you to do a seated flat, everybody's right. doing runs, and there's 20, you know, it narrowed down to 29 people that you're doing runs 29 times. And I was like, what's happening? <laughs> so, your legs are like, it's so weird because you're like, okay, okay, okay. And then it's like, it's so much stop and go because you like hit the run and then you sit back down and you wait for the next person. My legs were so tired. It was crazy. Um, and then the my seated flat was shit. So I had two different playlists. Both of them had pie. And then the second one was my seated flat. And what's crazy is I think it was Debbie Gibson Lookout Weekends remix. I don't but even it was know like if I know EDM that. Remix. Okay. Um, it's, it's like, look out weekend, cause here I come. <laughs> Okay, that's enough of me saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, people people just like to hear, like, what we audition to. It's so funny to me. And, like, some of us, it's still stuff we play in class. And some of us, it's like, I haven't touched that song since then. So it just depends. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's what's – It's so true. So what's one of your favorite parts of class? It can be, like, literally a moment. It can be, like, something so specific, like the hill, or a lot of people talk about the soulful moment, or, like, the go – like, what's one of your just, like, favorite moments of class? Okay, this is, like – this is, like – Every single class, it makes me want to cry. <laughs> I don't want to get emotional, though. You can. Every single class, my favorite part from start to finish, whatever it is I choose, obviously I love the soulful part, but when I'm standing on the podium and I put on the first song, and I know, I know you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about, and they start to ride, and you feel the vibration through the floor, 
and your yeah. podium, your podium, you can it's, feel like a, like a podium shit, like a rock on your podium. And yeah. right before I get on the bike and I just like close my eyes for a second, people probably don't even notice I'm doing this cause they're in their zone, you know? Yeah. But it's like, everybody picks up, they're all on the pace. You know, I give them a moment and I'm just like, I feel that, I feel that vibration through the floor. And it literally like, it goes through my, it, it start travels up my legs, goes through my body. And I'm just like, game on. And I get on the bike and that moment is like, in, like every single class, no matter how I walk in there. Sometimes, you know, we have rough days, we walk in there. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm anxious or maybe my, one of my bird, my birds got in a fight right before or something crazy or I'm hangry, I don't know. But that moment, that little shift of energy and everybody getting out of the saddle and me feeling that, I'm just like, no matter what happened before I walked into this room, game on. We're here. Let's do yeah. it. And it's, that's my favorite, favorite moment. Ever. That's so funny you say that because no one's talked about the beginning of class oh. at all. Um, and that's really interesting you say that. And I love, I know what you're talking about because like at all the studios, you can feel like the floor you can, moving. You can. Um, but I, I, in class, I tell them, I'm like, Oh my God, you guys don't know how this feels because you're not standing here, but this vibration going through the floor, this energy that you're, you're delivering, because that's them. That's their yeah. energy, you know? And I'm just like, I don't know, it blows my mind. No, that's really cool. And I feel like that's like a really good reminder before you get on your bike, you're like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And like, this is why I want to do, like, it's just crazy. Like how it's little crazy. things it like that are like, yeah, that's awesome. I like that. It's so different. Um, uh, this is gonna be hard for you, but what is a go-to song that you're like right now? You're like, I will play that in every class if I could. That you'll just never stop playing. It'd probably be a remix to Partition. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Is it fast? Is it fast? It's fast. It's fast. I'm gonna yeah. have like four different remixes. They're all like a, like a one. I know we call them two hundreds, but whatever. Right. DJs call them one hundreds, but yeah. Uh, Drive a roll up the partition, please. I don't know. Something fucking about it. Da, da, I, da, da, da. I feel and, like we all like can think of one that's your like when I go back to class, like I'm playing that right away and I'm sure that's like on your list. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for uh, sure. Yes. It. Well, okay, along with like the whole music thing, who is one artist or group that people will definitely hear in your class? I know that's really hard too. Ooh. With somebody who you play like on the regular or Ooh you default to I love NF uh I love Drake you'll probably hear one of them in every class yeah oh my god yeah. NF, NF is like soul cycle he is so good people who like didn't don't know who he is yet it blows my mind because yeah. he's so amazing I play okay. him far too often but I'm like also like I don't care because he hits every time He's Every like, time. He's, like, angry, and I love it. He's angry, um, but he's filled with so much passion. Right, right. He's like, ah! soul, he's, like, soulful angry. I love him. Um, yes. Okay, so what's your favorite move on the bike, or what's your favorite move that you like to, like, tell the class to do? Because sometimes I feel like they're different, like, what we like to do compared to, like, what we like to watch people do. I don't know. So, I mean, I like, I like a lot of them, but I like when we're just riding, and we'll do, like, a press to a lean. And okay. Just the whole, it's just – so you're not, you're not, it's not, it's different than a sway, right? It's different right. than a two right, two hey, left. Hey, Andy, I saw, just saw Andy's head. Look at Andy's making masks in the back. We appreciate Andy's service. What's hilarious is he uses, a, so I have a ring light, and he has a ring light as his, like, light for masks. <laughs> Anyways, so if we're on the bike, you know, you're doing, like, a press to a lean, so you're using obliques, but it's so fun. That's People cool. Get into it, and then I have them kind of travel lower, and it's just, like, that's I love fun. double taps and body rolls. I like I like stuff that like feels like you're dancing, you know? Yeah. The so, body you know what's funny? For how much I like dancing, I have never done a body roll in class ever. It's not my thing. I, I don't I just don't like it. I I feel so dumb doing it myself. And I feel like if now two years in I told my class like body roll, they'd be like, What in the hell's going on here? Isn't that crazy? I want you to do a body roll. <laughs> If Who I the hell knows? When we get out of quarantine, I'm just gonna be like, "Don't tap back body roll." And people are like, "All right, this is what's <laughs> happening now." Um, no, it's funny. I just never, I just never cue that. It's so funny. Like Liv was saying, she loved the double tap back body roll too, which is so funny. I don't know, yeah. but it's yeah, so like it. you. That's so you. Um, yeah. 
So what are three words that would describe your class? Oh, I love hearing this from people because, and don't feel like, oh, I'm like making myself feel good. Like, no, say anything. Liv was like, is it bad if I say my class is fun? I'm like, give yourself some credit. Oh, like no, I don't, I, people I don't tell you all the time what your class is like. And they talk about like, I'm sure your energy and stuff. So you can talk about that. Who cares? It's definitely, I'm like, it's definitely high energy. Um, and I don't mean necessarily, that means we're like speedy fast. I mean, yeah. it's just high energy, like people are excited and, and like shouting and yeah. you know, doing things. Um, and obviously before quarantine, you know, cheersing and high-fiving and all those things. So I'd definitely say the energy is high in there. And okay. even if we're on a heavy ass hill, you can still have high energy and be on a slow, heavy hill, you know? Right, so for sure. All of those things, I would say it's, um, it's got its moments of spirituality mixed with definitely savage as hell. Cause I mean, I, <laughs> I know we're not supposed to curse in class and every once in a while, because it's, it's, it's not like we're saying, fuck this. It's like, we're saying, fuck shit up. It's a little bit different. Yeah. When you're, you know, when you're saying it and you're, you're like, you know, you're wanting it to be part of like your passion. It's different than like saying like, fuck this shit or whatever. Like for you sure can, you can still be effective in the way that you drop an F bomb and yeah. I don't do it all the time, but like, you know, if it comes out, I'm like, we've all heard it before. <laughs> no, I feel that so, so much. I mean, I don't want us to like talk too much about that, but it's yeah. funny. Sometimes writers are like, it hypes me up when you do that. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm going to do it at the right time. I'm not yeah, just going to be up here throwing it, you know? Yeah. Um, oh wait. So you said high energy, high energy. I would spiritual. say it's definitely spiritual and, and savage and it's savage. And that savage. is so you like, I just pictured Janelle riding to like these ratchet ass, like, throwback hip hop remixes and just but she also has this element that is so you do you just you're a very beautiful soul I'm not like trying to be like Ooh. but you are like she sent me this bracelet guys it's a soul oh! sister on it and I like got it in the mail and I was like wait that's so nice uh, and she I asked me, pounded that yes she asked me my favorite color and the envelope was the color I said I was like what the hell anyway <laughs> just like it goes anyway anyway um so yeah, those, I think those are great words. I have yet to take your class. Actually, my friends have taken your class, which killed me because they were out in San Diego like two years ago. I was yeah. really new in the summer and they're like, who should we take? And I was like, Janelle by far. And we yeah. didn't even, we didn't even know each other yet, which is so crazy. That's crazy. Like, and I was like, you need to take Janelle. Cause I just, I just knew that whatever. And, um, oh, I don't I love that. Well, just because, like, they liked my music, and I just figured that they probably liked yours, too. And I remember they were like, dude, that girl's... But they loved your class. But anyways, I want to take Crazy, wild. Crazy. Okay, so off day. Janelle and I have the same off day on Fridays. What is your go-to thing to do on your off day? Do you like to do other workouts? Do you like to recover? What's your thing? Definitely recover. Um, usually, I... Yeah, I don't want to say I don't want to say binge eat, but I definitely treat myself to things that I don't eat. A little Shake Shack? Either. Yeah, a little bit of Shake Shack. I actually start that on Thursday night. So Thursday night, because I'm knowing oh. I have Friday off. Thursday oh my God, night, I'm, the, I'm the same way. I'm like, well, I, do, I can feel like shit tomorrow because I'm not teaching tomorrow. I feel you. I feel you. And I can be bloated and I don't care. And I can be full of sodium and my, my eyeballs are puffy. It doesn't matter because I'm not teaching. So. Right. You're so right. Because all those things are considered, you know, when you're about to get on a bike and teach class, you know, I can't just go eat Shake Shack anytime I want. I got to plan it out. <laughs> yeah, no, you're so right. It's so funny. I didn't realize that until like, I don't know, however many months or a year into it. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to eat bad the night before because Absolutely. that way the next morning, like if I feel a little sluggish, it's not as big of a deal when I'm teaching a survivor yeah. on a Saturday. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I usually treat myself the night before and then uh, sometimes I sleep in and sleeping in for me could mean like eight o'clock. I know that sounds funny. <laughs> like, yeah. I have birds. You have to remember this. So I literally have a natural alarm clock that it, no matter what, you don't get to press snooze on animals. So unfortunately, my ass is up. But usually I recover. We have a place here. Um, I don't, am I allowed to drop a name on a place? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's called Livecraft and it's out in downtown La Jolla. And I, I love Livecraft. I love the staff there. So they have cryotherapy. They have um, infrared lighting. They have the float pods. And I don't know if you've done that, Callie, but. I have. They're so good. Ugh. 
Uh, so the relaxing. First time, the first time was hard, but then I got used to it to like the actual, yeah. like, all right, calm down. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. It but, takes me, it, t- it takes me like 20 minutes to actually calm down it does. and then you're in there for like an hour, but yeah. But it's recovery so is key. And then, and then you and I have kind of the same schedule on Saturday. We ha- we have a double I right think now a triple, but, um, so that recovery Friday is, is big for me. And I usually do eat more on Friday than normal. I just fill mm-hmm. up, fill up, fill up. Cause I know that I need that. I need those calories and that energy for Saturday. And it, and it yeah, it's, it's like, we're like back to back. And then now you have that 1145. Oh. Um, that's a lot. Back to back to back. Look at that matcha. Look at Callie I'm, taught me about all about matcha. Cheers to you, Callie, for putting me onto this. And then look, I I have kombucha today, but whatever. I just bought it at the store. But look it at you. So it nice. looks so good. It's so green. It's so good. It's so green. Um, There's vanilla collagen in here too. So ooh. keep it up because my hair is getting long through quarantine. True. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, right. I feel like you, I feel like I would go to Janelle when I want to talk about like recovery or cross training because she's very, very good at it in my opinion. So, and not all instructors are. Um, okay, so this is fun. What's one thing you, your riders may not know about you? I know it's really hard to like think of that on one the spot. One thing. They may not know, uh, this is kind of like a little bit deep, but they may not know that I have a full sister that I don't, we don't, we don't know her because my mom had her when she was 16 same dad same mom full sister wow and my mom gave her up for adoption because she was young and they Mm -hmm. weren't married yet and um so that sister is still floating around on this earth and i don't know her so does she know that you're whoa that's we just don't we just don't know she's older than me she's got to be she's like four years older than me and Mm -hmm. i always think about her you know i'm always like She's old enough to come and search for my mom, you know, and I, I just, yeah. like, I don't know. So she just I, never did. I just, she just, wow. she just did it. So it's one of those things that am I going to live out my entire life and, and never know this woman? It's kind of wild. It's Cause you have no way of finding her. No. And I mean, if anybody out there obviously like can DM me ideas because I've tried in the past, I've given up on it like years ago, but mm-hmm. I, I did some research and I did some digging and, I was like, should I go on one of those talk shows? Like, maybe I'll go on a talk show, you know? <laughs> but maybe they could do the research because it's yeah. really expensive. And then the other thing is siblings only have so much access to so much information. So right. my mom or my dad needs to go and do a lot of digging, which neither one of them wants to. And I think it's out of, like, fear type of thing. But yeah. uh, but I think about her a lot, and I, I wonder, is she like me? Is she like my brother? Like, what is she like, you know? That's so interesting. Oh, a lot of people well, don't know that. Well, I'm yeah. so I'm like sorry, but no, that's, it's okay. It's just it's wild. wild. It's wild. I was like, right? you thought of something so quickly where I feel like if I was put on the spot and somebody asked you that, I would literally be like, pass because I don't know. But yeah, that's crazy. Wow. That's just that's just like a like in my yeah. I don't mind that people know. Obviously, yeah. I said it, but it's just something I don't talk about. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we all have that stuff. Wild, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, wild. Okay, so this is completely separate from that, but let's uh, go there. This, uh, when I started doing these, I started asking people, "What are the things you want to actually hear from instructors?" And a lot of people out there want to be soul cycle instructors. I feel like I'm like um, a broken record when I do these interviews because obviously the questions are the same, so I like set them up the same. But whatever. So, what do you think it was that made you stand out? Um, because soul cycle is so competitive. As far as uh, uh, during the audition. Yeah, as far as just, like, getting in. Getting in. Yeah. Um, I would say that I, okay, I showed up, and I was, I was, I was intimidated, but I was also confident, if that makes sense. I was kind of both, mm-hmm. but when I got up there, I didn't overthink anything. I remember looking at everybody, and I was like, you know what, when I stand up on that podium, I'm just going to act like these are all my friends that I'm riding with, even though I don't know these people, mm-hmm. and I'm just going to have a good time, because here's the worst that could happen is I get a no, but I already won, because guess what, I'm here on this podium, I made it to round two, and I was really super, at that point, I was really proud of myself, so even if I went home and, and I didn't get the job, um, I was just really proud of myself at that point, yeah. so I, I was thriving off of that already, and I feel like I, so when I got up there, I literally announced my entire name. Like, who does that? It's so weird. And I had my bright bird pants on with feathers all over them. And I said that my name is Janelle. And I, I at the time, had six birds. So I was like, I have six children. 
just so I could get people to be like, oh, I have six children. They all have feathers. And everybody kind of was like, what the hell? This girl's so weird. And I was like, I know what you're thinking. I'm a crazy bird lady. We don't all sit in a park on a bench covered in shit. And everybody was like, and it was just like, it was kind of just like funny. And I looked over at Marvin and Marvin like, like looked at me, like gave me the like, what the hell is this girl? And Pixie kind of laughed. And I just feel like just being myself, just totally being myself, not worrying about, am I going to cue this perfectly? Am yeah. I going to be able to like say, give me a tap back push up? Like I, at that point I had, I had rode so seldom at Soul Cycle because it was in Newport mm -hmm. that I didn't know how to quickly adjust the bike either. So I was oh. and we're adjusting and it was the old bike with like the, you know, the cranks and shit. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh my God. So I was like fumbling a little and I, I literally say, oh shit, I forgot how to do this or something like that. And I was like, it was, so, I was just so me and so real that, you know, mm -hmm. I was fumbling. I was just being funny. It just was fast. And um, I don't know. So I'm not, I don't think it was anything I did necessarily different. I just was like. I'm just going to give them me and hope it works. Yeah. You know, you know, what's funny is that's what every person I've asked has said. And, um, because whatever version that is of you, that's you, that's true to you. And that's okay. what they want. That's what they're looking for. But I always, I leave that question in because I want to hear everybody's different explanation of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I yeah. feel like that's so true. And I feel like they clearly just immediately are like this bird lady's crazy, but we love her energy and she is so unique. And I'm, and obviously you're like so in shape. Um, so yeah, love that. that well, thanks. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm just saying there, but when they, when you were like, I have six kids who were probably like this bitch. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, seriously. So back to like being more like spiritual in your classes, where is it you think that you pull like your motivation for like or not your motivation, where is it you pull all of that from for like your inspirational talks in those moments in class where you are a little bit more spiritual and soulful? People want to know if there's like secret sauce to it. I'm like, there's no handbook on us, like on our speeches, but like, where do you get that from? Yeah, I, honestly, there's, okay, so I'm gonna, I might get real weird on you guys and Callie, you might actually think a little different. Of me I'm just going to eat this little sushi roll while you talk, continue. Eat that sushi roll, girl. Um, so oftentimes, okay, so for, I think for every soul cycle instructor, I can't speak for everybody, but for the, for the majority of people that I have spoken to and, and do have these conversations with, um, sometimes we empty our tank so much that we feel, we feel kind of like we've flatlined with soulful moments. And we're, I'm like, I feel depleted of what am I supposed to tell people when I just, I just feel so depleted right now, you know? So then my soul for that day will be based off of me feeling depleted and me needing to, to reset and me needing to find balance. So, so it's not necessarily what can I, well, let me read a book and, and figure out what I can say to them today. And I'm not saying I've never done that because sometimes I'm reading a book for me and something inspires me to share. Right. But then there's the other part of me that I just read for me and that wasn't what I needed to say. And what I needed to say is, share with them how I'm feeling and kind of encourage myself in the moment of encouraging them. So sometime if I'm um, feeling less grateful for whatever reason, or maybe I'm, I'm fighting with Andy. And so I'm just like, Bleh, with my life, because I'm a human, we're not robots, then maybe I need to come in and talk about gratitude and bring it back down and dial myself back down and maybe dial them back down. And not everything is going to hit every person in my class. And I get that. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is there for this, you know, they can pick mm -hmm. up tidbits, but the, but the majority of people are feeling a lot of the same things. We're all people. So somewhere, somehow you've lost gratitude for something. So if I'm talking about gratitude, it probably struck you in some way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or if I'm talking about feeling lost or underappreciated or whatever it is, but, and then there are times you guys, when I just like read something in a book and I'm like, I got to share this. This is so powerful because it hit me hard. So yeah. it makes me want to share it. And then sometimes, sometimes I get motivated by a song. I'm like, mm -hmm. this song is so beautiful. And it's just talking about community. And I, that's all I want to do is talk about community. And then this mm -hmm. is where I say, I might get weird. This is the last thing I'm going to say. Cause this has only happened to me like maybe five or six times since I've been okay. teaching. Um, so wherever your spiritual level is, whether you believe in God or, you know, 
Buddha or the universe or whatever. I don't know. What, we all feel like we, there's a higher power in our life. And, and if you don't, that's fine too. But um, for me, I've done a lot of soul searching, especially in the last like two years since I've been doing this, two and a half years, whatever. And um, I've had, okay, so I've had moments in class where I felt. Say it, I say felt, it. It's not weird. I'm excited for weird. whatever you're about to say. It's not weird. Uh, I felt a message. I'm getting like emotional thinking about it where a message was sent to me and through me. And so a message was delivered. It wasn't even something I planned on talking about in one specific, uh, I was talking about angels and how people, how people you've lost are here in this room with us because I felt my grandfather's presence in the room. And, and for whatever reason, I needed to say that to everybody because there's a lot of people who have lost loved ones or friends or people ha have friends that have committed suicide and so many, so many ways that we deal with loss, but we, we experience loss in different ways, but we all feel lost the same. So I had this message come down and it, and it was like, I was crying while I was saying it in class and it's happened to me a few times where it's not something I walked in there thinking about. I didn't think about, I wasn't even thinking about it. And it just like, literally got delivered to me and I was just meant to say it. Like I was a vessel in that moment for a message that came from a higher power. And that legitimately happened to me, like I said, like five or six times. And it, and when I left that day, I remember I had to go home and just like take a hot shower and just kind of like, I don't know, like sit in it for a little, but that's, that's been like my wildest soulful experience. I don't think that's so weird. Far. I don't think that's weird at all. I, it's, well, it's just like, well, one, well, one, I think a lot of the times we don't go in the room like with some pre-planned thing okay. or whatever. Um, and it just comes to us based on the room or the energy or what we're feeling, which is kind of what you're talking about. But like, I don't think yeah. there's anything crazy about saying like, there is something that like hits you and you're like, I'm supposed to say this. Don't know why, but I'm going to. And yeah. then it ends up like there's, there was probably somebody in that room that day that like, had just experienced loss or you know what I mean and like mm -hmm. that person needed to hear that and it come, came from you you know what I mean right and like whether it was your grandfather or whether it was like whoever their loss of them was like who not, you know what I mean like I don't think that's crazy at all yeah okay I, 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 buy, I buy in I buy into that so you don't have to feel <laughs> weird to me we love it we all just miss the shit out of it I'm bad so I miss all cycles so much <laughs> I wish I could make that the thumbnail where you're like this. Oh my God. Okay. Um, okay. So Take it kind, off. kind of along, along with like energy and stuff. Um, it's funny because I think writers pick up on this, which is why people ask me this, but how does the class energy affect the way you teach? For example, when energy may be lower, mm -hmm. what does that mean for you? Or when it's high, what does that mean for you? I mean, it goes definitely both ways. Oh my gosh. When it's high, it's like, it's like, listen, I haven't, I've, I haven't done crazy drugs in my life, but I was I just about to say, like, it feels like drugs, but I haven't done like, ah! <laughs> And you feel like everybody in class is on the same crazy drug, whatever that is, that you're on. And it's like a, it's like, we keep taking hits at the same time type of thing. And trust me, you guys, I know that's crazy. I'm not condoning taking drugs. I'm just saying. Take soul cycle. Take soul cycle. That's it. <laughs> but uh, on the flip side of it, when it is really low energy and that does happen and, and you come in with this killer play that you're, ah! and everybody's kind of riding and they got their heads down a little or like, you, it's like, it's weird. And it, it usually happens about three days before a full moon. I will tell you, because I've been tracking it, <laughs> but, um, but I have to give more and I, I might leave there a little bit emptier, you know, like, mm -hmm. because when it's high energy, right, we're giving, we're taking, we're giving, yep, we're taking. Yep, yep, yep. When it's low energy, you're giving, yeah. giving, 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 yep. giving, giving. And then you have to go out that day and you have to, you have to find a way to replenish, to replenish that energy back, right? You have to like give something back to yourself. Those classes, yes, they leave me like more depleted. Cause I know, I, I know people need more from me. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that, and, you know, it's, it's like, it's not even like I can say it's 50, 50, it's hit and miss. It could be the whole week is high energy. And then you have that double that's like both classes are low energy. You're like, I don't know what just happened. Then you feel like it's you, but it's like, we're just people. We're just people. We're just people. I'm going to give you everything that I got. And if you don't have anything to give me in return, that's okay. I'm here for you. And mm -hmm.
I'm going to find another outlet to get that energy so that I can do this again for, for the next pe group of people that need yeah. me. You know what I mean? For so. sure. No, I think people just like, I think the people who've been, who were asking me that, they just like to know what it means for us because obviously a seasoned rider can, like understands what's going yeah. on. And I've had riders so many times, they're friends of mine who are like typically wooers is what I call them. They like woo. Yes. That noise. Um, and they're like, after like my third woo, when no one else was doing it, they were like, sorry, but like I stopped because I was uncomfortable. People were glaring at me. Like, I didn't want to do it. I'm like, but I need you doing it. But yeah. I'm like, it's fine. But it, I think that's why people ask me that question because they always want to know like, so how do you feel in a room that's quiet? I'm like, well, no one prefers it, but like, Right. It also is our job and we're here to show up for you. If you can't, you know, make noise that day. Like, you know, what's funny when I was a rider, I don't know. Well, you didn't ride it so a lot, but I'm sure like where you were, like people made noise. I was, I never made noise. I was very um, like, but now I love it. But um, yeah. when I was a rider, I was super focused. Mm -hmm. My instructors would talk about that, how I was just so like laser focused. Cause to me, it was like a very athletic moment. Like yeah. the soulful, I'd let go and stuff. But like when I was there, I was like there to work. So like, I was never like, woo! I, I didn't care if people did it, but it's funny now that I'm like, I understand I wasn't that person, but I'm going to need you to be that person. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, well. Um, yeah, well, you might get emotional about this one too, but um, what makes you, what inspire? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Um, what so inspires funny. you most about Soul Cycle? Definitely the people. I mean, right. it's hands down the people. I mean, I, there's, it's the community and it's the way that we are all sharing this energy in a room together and we don't have to necessarily know each other, but it's like you leave and you just feel like you know each other no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, honestly, I have a bike here. I love riding here, but it's, it's so much different than being in that space and showing up. And there's just, there's people that show up for themselves or they show up and, and they're, they're showing up for everybody, you know, and, and sometimes it's both, but I just feel like I've never, I've never been so committed to being a part of something in my life where I don't mind spending New Year's Eve there. I don't mind spending New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. I don't mind spending my 40th birthday there. You mm -hmm. know, every time I had a job it's before, so it's like, mm -hmm. I need a vacation. I can't work on my birthday. And now all of a sudden you're like, my birthday is coming on Soul Cycle. Right? Yeah, I know. Life it's so different. different. Um, and I'm inspired to be the best version of myself. And I feel like everybody else shows up and they're there to do the same thing. Even if they're having a low energy day, it's okay. You know, whatever, we're, we're there. But that's what I love the most about soul and, and everything is a family from start to finish from the staff, writers, whether you have a cleaning team, everybody is like on board with the same mission and it's just to be the best version of ourselves. And mm. I don't, I've never had a job where that's all that's expected of you show up and be the best version of yourself. That's it, you yeah. know, and, and just love on each other and be kind and, Mm -hmm. and get what you can and give what you can and let's make the world a yeah. better place <laughs> for sure for sure it's a special place that's special that's definitely accurate um so along with how special they think it is what do you think a misconception is that people have about soul cycle oh my easy it's a cult it's cool <laughs> it's cool you gotta be like upper echelon you gotta be a badass you gotta be super fit to work out there you got to be super rich to work out there. You got to have the best workout clothes to work out there. Like all of the things you hear, mm -hmm. that's like, that is nothing like that. Yeah. It is, it is like literally nothing like that. I see all walks of life. I see all ages. I see all, uh, all different levels of fitness. You know, I see mm -hmm. everything there. I yep. see everybody there. And I see people wearing hood and sweatshirts riding. I don't know how they do it, but they do yeah, it. And yeah, I know, I know. That wants to be super naked, you know? And it's yeah. like, there's everything. It's like going to the gym, but I mean, obviously different, but it's like that. You can expect every type of personality. If there's, there's nothing is cookie cutter about Soul Cycle. I think people try to like wrap it up, gift wrap it and put a bow on it. This is what it is, you know? And it's nothing like that. It's so diverse. It's so yeah. unique and diverse. And I know. And it accumulates I feel like it accumulates a certain type of people, meaning mentally, you're a little bit weird, you're a little weird out, you're sensitive, you're savage, you're all those things, but you're committed to yourself. And it's like, all the other things, like, 
I don't know. I mean, yeah, no, I feel that that's definitely one of the biggest things. And like, yes, yeah, soul cycle can be a little culty, but not in the sense of what you said of like, what you look yeah. like your fitness, le- like any of that, because you'd be so surprised walking into somebody's room, like how many dads are in the room or how many like, you, like, it's just not even just dads, because p- I think people just picture these like, yeah. Victoria Beckham's going to Soul Cycle, and that's all that it is. And it's just like, yeah. what? Like, no. Yeah, it's not um, like that at all. Yeah, I mean, we, for and sure. Then we have people with injuries, even that are like just struggling to roll their legs out, and and you know, we have every. I I had women that were overdue with their pregnancy. You know yeah. I mean? like, yep. Mm-hmm. For sure. There. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's. Everything. I think people just need to like go knock it before you try it type thing. Um, so I, I'm interested to see what you say to this. So if you weren't at Seoul right now, um, what do you think your career would be? What do you think you'd be doing? I'd be working with birds. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would probably have been, I, when I was a kid, I used to, and this is weird, I used to always like take my stuffed animals and do surgical operations on them and things. And oh. I wanted to be a vet, um, but then as I got- I older, wanted to be a vet. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to be a vet. See? I I wanted to be a vet until we put my first dog down because I didn't realize that that was part of it. So yeah, yeah, I literally wanted to be a vet until I was 12. Um, Like fully, that's what I thought my job was going to be. Yeah. I, uh, would you be a vet or would you be like a bird doctor or would you be like a, I do, I do avian vet, like veterinary services, but with like birds or exotic animals. So the place we take our birds is like just for exotic animals. Like when we go to take the birds, there's like, there's like, chinchillas there and like um chickens and and weird oh just God. weird things yeah so I would want to work at a vet place like that but life took me off track wow. a little bit and led me here and this is where I'm supposed to be so you know. yeah oh my god yeah that's crazy well there we will always to be, be birds too. <laughs> <laughs> that's so crazy see we were just like there's something about it um so Okay, here's the deal. First time rider coming into class, what is the one piece of advice that you would give them? I would say, okay, I would definitely say stay open minded. But I think I think physically, I would say, don't worry about the choreography. I would rather you I would rather you listen and observe and like try to get the beats and bring it up when you can. But the choreography to me is secondary with getting that first foundation of getting the beat because yeah. they're going to be like, they're going to be rolling their legs out and try to do this. Oh, I know. Oh God. And they're going to get know. hurt. And I like, I know that they're still going to try, but I think, I think most important is just getting the bite because getting I know from beat. my own experience of sitting in the back row and trying to do the choreography and my legs not understanding the beat. It's really yeah. weird. And mm-hmm. I danced like my whole life too. So I had that dance background. I knew how to count music and things, but I was like, this is weird. So I yeah. would say just be patient. A, you're not going to get it in the first shot. B, especially if you're first time riding ever. Yeah. Like you're, you're not going to walk out of here a rock star, you know, right away. We, we build yep. up to that. So patience, foundation. Okay. Just riding on the beats and just mm-hmm. stay open minded and just absorb what you can. You know, that's it. Yeah. For sure. I agree with that. I, I like the just telling them to ride a beat. I say that all the time in class. I'm like, choreography is optional. Like at the beginning when I'm like talking to new riders. Um, yeah. Because yes, they're going to try it. But at the same time, it's good for them to know that they don't have to. Um, yeah. So in this job, this, this may kind of like relate to something I asked earlier. But because this job is so like emotionally and physically draining, um, mm-hmm. how do you stay motivated? You've been doing this for two and a half three years come October when you, you know, how do you stay motivated to continue to show up for other people? So I, I have to meditate. I have to be alone. I have to be alone. So I'm, I'm super outgoing and I love being around people and this quarantine is driving me insane, but on, on any normal giving, given, lifestyle you know what we're doing normally I need to be I need to be alone like as in like Andy is not around me as in like my birds are not near me as in like I need my alone time and I and it's therapeutic for me it's not it's not me being alone getting my nails done it's actually me just just being alone you know Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um and that could be taking a walk that could be sitting on my couch that could be taking a nap I don't know whatever it is and it's different things but I need to be alone and I feel like we're you know 
we're so committed to just like relying on other people to like fill us up, but you have to be okay with like being alone too. You know what I mean? And you're able to process your thoughts and your, and, and, and like what you need, your needs and, mm -hmm. and feel yourself out when you're like by yourself. So I need alone time. That's for sure. Um, I need somewhere to have like fresh air, walk or whatever, but uh, I also just need to meditate and I need to read something. And it could be literally like if you're that person that doesn't like to read, sometimes I just need to read like two pages or 10 pages of something or just like the daily stoic, like a one, like a mm -hmm. little paragraph. And I'm like, okay. And just kind of like fills me back up. You know, mm -hmm. I might listen to a podcast or something, but I just feel like I need to be alone sometimes. That's it. Yeah. And that's how you just like keep filling your, like refueling, I guess. I yeah. totally feel that. I don't know. I mean, I haven't talked to like, you know, every instructor, but I don't know one person who like doesn't need, I know for me personally, like I need that alone time and that mm -hmm. downtime because it's just like, it's so hard to describe to people sometimes. Like they're like, yeah, but you just teach spin. And I'm like, you just don't understand. Mm -hmm. I'm like what people, the baggage they bring in that they throw on you, the energy they throw at mm -hmm. you, like that you have to like, I was like, I a just lot. need, yeah. And it's, and it's like, even I get in my car and I drive home a lot and I silence like mm -hmm. in nothing. Cause I'm like, can't listen to music. I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody, but yeah, no, I did so important for us to like, keep showing up to like basically it's... crawl into a shell. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So what's one thing, so someone's leaving your class, what's one thing you want them to leave with? So like, if there's just one thing that they take from your class, um, from you, like, what is it that you want them to either feel or think or know, or what is it? Um, I feel like, oh, that's a tough one. I know, I know. Why is that a tough one? <laughs> because um, there's so I many, it depends on the day sometimes, you know, like what you want people to you feel. Know, yeah, I guess. Uh, so a lot of times in class, I'll say to them, I want you to leave something here. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, I want them to take things with them also, but. In, in, in order to take something with you, you have to drop something off, right? Because yep. you can only actually carry so much, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, whatever. So I always ask them in class, like, drop something off, like, lighten your load. And then, and then that way you can pick up something new. And so what I want them to leave, I guess, feeling, it's going to be different for everybody, is just feeling like they have space to create something new. You know, whatever that is, maybe I need to create something new at work. Maybe I need to create something new with my family or, you know, or with my pets or with myself, but I want them to, to leave something. I always, I, I want them to leave something in that room, leave mm -hmm. it there. We'll clean it up. Right. We'll clean it yeah, up. Yeah, totally. And then I want you to leave with new space so that you can observe what you need to create that's new for yourself. So mm -hmm. I guess if it's one thing, it would be that just having yeah. that space to feel new in a new area yeah. of your life. So you want them to like leave something behind. I always tell people that I want them to leave something that doesn't serve them anymore. Like we, I, I, feel, I feel like I say that a lot. Um, but because yeah, we have it daily, yeah. right? Every yeah, day. for sure. Every day. Yeah. I think that's good. Okay. So I'm going to turn the comments back on as you answer these last two questions. Um, but <laughs> I feel like we're like talking fast, but I also don't know the time, but I feel 12 like 51. Oh, so no, not really. Um, no, anyway, okay. Um, so this is different for a lot of people. I feel like when I made this question, I was thinking of people in my head, but, um, two people who've been influential to you on your soul cycle journey. And I'm going to turn the comments on. So people who people. have questions for Janelle, just start asking them away. So this can be somebody in your personal life, or this can be people, um, in the soul cycle realm who have like helped you, influenced you, encouraged you, like whatever. That's a sticky one because I have a lot of people that have helped me, but I know, I know. Let's see. All right, so she doesn't teach at Soul anymore, but she's one of my best friends, and that is Megan Armenta in LA. Oh, okay. Um, I fucking love that girl. I lived with her in New York. We trained together. Mm -hmm. um, lots of lots of questions and thoughts and processing in the first year teaching at soul and if anybody if there was anybody there that I could lean into that was always there for me to lean into it was her 
and we did that for each other. And um, she's pregnant now. She's expecting her third baby. Aww. But uh, so she's not at Seoul anymore. And who's to say she may be in the future? I don't know. But um, definitely her. And I would say the second person. Is behind you? And, or probably be Andy. <laughs> because Aww. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I feel like when you're married or you're in a tight relationship or you live together, it's just almost feeling like you're married, right? You're in a relationship. You feel like you're married. Mm -hmm. um, he says a lot of things to me when I'm questioning things or doubting things. He says a lot of things to me. And sometimes I take his opinion and I don't, I don't let it soak into me the way that it needs to. And then I might hear that same opinion from 20 other people. And then all of a sudden I repeat it back to him. And he's like, I said that two months ago to you. And yeah. I'm like, shit, you did. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to me because he's somebody that's, that's been in my corner and I don't, this is what I'm talking about when I was talking about gratitude and stuff and just being grateful for people like that, that you tend to overlook things because you're just so used to them cheering you on. I'm like, I'm used to you being my cheerleader. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, um, but if I didn't have that, it would, it would have just been a lot harder for me on my whole entire, um, journey so yeah he's seen me at my worst he's seen me when i come home from a class and i am super depleted and i'm like everybody hates me <laughs> yeah oh yes yes you know yes yes I mean? yeah oh he's for like, sure give me a break go eat some s'mores bites you'll be fine I love that. No, I mean, it, it's different for everybody. It's like, they could be people who are in the soul cycle realm, like who were like mentors or whatever, or they could be people in your personal life who literally have gotten you through. Um, so I love that. That's so great. I want you to finish the sentence and then we'll answer some of these questions from people. Um, to me, soul cycle is love, love, love that. That's good. That's a good one. There's so much love there. It's ridiculous. It is. Ridiculous. It's so true. I, you, just, just, just to go off love really quick. Um, when I started this, at, when I started Soul, when I auditioned, I had six birds. So I lost two birds through that. Um, Andy and I have lost a friend. Um, you know, we've, my dad got cancer. Um, he beat it now. There's been a lot of things that have happened. And the amount of love that people have shown me every time I've shown up at Soul has literally, Callie, like gotten me through dark mm -hmm. ass deep ass moments that I don't know if I could have survived them without that community and that right. love so I'm just like you know losing a pet's like losing a child I felt like I was losing a child I had to go back to work and everybody embraced me got I had flowers I had you know all these all these things all these hugs and um and it was able it was I was able to spiral back up to the top a little bit faster than than I than I may than I may have been able to you know so the love yeah. the love at soul is really real yeah, really no, real. I feel I feel that for sure. Um, okay, first question is really light. Um, is there a sword behind you? Yes. <laughs> do you want to lab? Do you want to elaborate? <laughs> I thought it was like a fire poker. I wasn't sure. Are you messing with me right now? Do you know about no. my sword? No. Someone wrote, "Is there a sword behind you, B?" <laughs> All right, really quick. I'll tell you the quick story. I used to compete in NPC. Right. Uh, we would drive up to NPC. Oh, it's it's a fitness competition. Yeah, right. right. Bikini yeah. I mean, the bikini right? girls are fit. They got muscle. Don't don't let a, the word bikini fool you. You got to put on yeah. a lot of muscle. I had a lot of muscle at the time. I don't have it anymore, but I did. Anyway, so uh, there's cat. They put you in categories according to your height, and then they narrow you down. You get first place, second, and third. Then the first place people go against each other for overall. You're the, oh, you're the okay. winner of the winners, okay? So me and my best friend are competing, but in different categories. And the night before the competition, we're in Culver City. She brings a broom with her to the hotel room. And she's like, with the broom, she's like posing and shit. Because there's a specific pose you do when you win a sword for competing. And she's like, you should, you should really practice with the broom, Janelle. And I'm like, you really think I'm going to get overall, bitch? And she's like... I would, I'm just saying the broom is here. I think you should, we're all tan. We're all painted like wood. I think you should pose while we're here. And I was like, nah, I'm good. Went to bed the next day. I get first place. I get overall. They're presenting me with the sword. I didn't practice posing. <laughs> 
so like you pose, right? You pose like specific. It's a specific pose. I literally grab it. The judges are like, I don't know, there's like 12 people in front of the stage. I grab it, I go, ah! <laughs> And it's got, like, the fucking funniest picture because the judges were, like, with glasses. They're, like, you know when they look at you at the top of your gla their glasses? Like, the fuck is she doing? I was, like, ah! ah! <laughs> That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. I also didn't just... know. That's so awesome you won that. So I like it here because this is my work. I have a desk This is area, your, like, so I... area. Yeah. Oh, that's a legitimate sword. I didn't know you won swords at NPC competitions. Oh, it's it's fucking heavy. Look, it's it like, looks it's, heavy. It's stainless steel. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, well. <laughs> anyway, wow. okay. That was a legit question. I love that someone asked that. So, what's your favorite workout besides Soul Cycle? Uh, just lifting weights. Just grabbing Listen, weights. Yeah, you like. Lifting. She knows what she's doing. If you guys haven't done any of Janelle's workouts, please do. Oh. She's doing them every day at nine thirty. Monday Neither, Friday. I'm, swe I'm sweating now. No, you're good. Oh, I know. Um, yes. Want to? And then everyone's just telling you hi and that they want to ride with you. Hi. Um, thank you both for your energy during this quarantine. I hope to get to take a class from both of you at some point. We have such a beautiful source of energy. I know when we got on here today and you were like playing music and stuff. I was like, today's about to be different. Um, <laughs> and I love that. Um, Aww, after thank all you, this, you guys. I'm coming to take your class. I'm trying to see if there's any more questions. Um, Okay, this is interesting. So, um, why do you think SoulCycle is as successful as it is? You kind of probably um, already talked about it, but. I mean, I think overall, uh, again, I'm not going to speak for everybody, but I feel like most people that work there love working there. And I think their love for working there shows the community that we're like here, we have an open, you know, open door policy for you at all times, no matter who you are, no matter. Mm -hmm what you are, um, we're here for you. And I think collectively, I think that they hire people that are on brand with that, that way of thinking, on brand yeah. with the, that way of thinking. I'm here for you, we're a community, we're a team, we all love each other and people love their jobs. And the people that don't love their jobs, they don't last very long because they're in a place where they just, we, that you don't belong there, you know what I mean? It's a place where you do show up and you do love your job, whether, whether you're a, a college student getting through but you still show up and people still love their job and I think yeah. that passion like kind of pours mm -hmm. out of us and it it makes the company successful overall we have good people working with us yeah I agree completely I yeah I I can't even talk I would just say I would good people test, I would test it to the people for sure the, people, the, yeah. the community the love you feel all that good stuff okay so we're gonna wrap this up so this yeah. is Janelle she teaches out in San Diego so, with her sword. Yes. Um, if you don't follow Janelle, please go do it. Um, obviously, I'm going to tag her in my story. She's Janelle Bird with an underscore at the end, like me. We yeah. have stupid underscores because somebody else took it. Anyway, oh. we'll, we'll figure that out one day. But <laughs> follow her along during quarantine for all of her like workouts that she's doing. She also does soulful moments. So, like, I do soulful moments East Coast time and she does them West Coast time, which is amazing. So, if you're on the West Coast, join hers blah, blah, blah. Bring that sword to class with riders who have Apple watches. That's incredible. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, look, Sandra just hopped on. She sent us kisses. Hi, Sandra. Oh, um, I love Sandra. And uh, yeah, so go follow Janelle. And I don't know, her energy is just so contagious. If you missed part of this, it'll be up on YouTube. What's today, Wednesday? Let's say like by Saturday, I'm being really ambitious today. I'm hopefully getting Catherine's up from two days ago today. Um, but yeah, I'm just cranking them out. Oh and it'll live Callie, on the internet forever. For me. You are so welcome. I love you so much. And I love yeah, you. I think that's it. Okay.